good morning friends welcome to the video we shall today turn our attention to documentary credits first let us have a look at the origins of documentary credits the origins of documentary credits it is said that the early origins were in egypt and babylon the name lc was coined only in late 18th or early 19th century and this the the event that was instrumental to the origin of documentary credit was that the merchants started setting out seeking new markets due to the expansion of the empires and setting up of the colonies the banks had cashed in on the traders need for cash during their overseas pursuits what the banks did was that first they issued the travelers letter of credit because the merchants were traveling worldwide to get new find new markets for their producers as well as to bring in new products for their own home markets these the banks had issued formal letters of introduction addressed to the overseas banks their correspondents and the overseas banks were requested to assist the traveler or the trader or to fund them this letter issued by the home country banks promised to honor the bills drawn or issued by the correspondent bills drawn on the issuer by the correspondent the letter issued by the home country bank also indicated the amount of the <coughs> amounts to be paid and these amounts paid to the named client were to be indicated on the back of the letter The oldest available sample is the one issued by the president of USA Thomas Jefferson to Captain Lewis and Captain Clark who were leaving on their expedition to the west it was dated 1803 4th of July and it called upon the cons consulates of the US and other countries as well as their friends and other nations to support these people with all their might and promised that USA will reimburse them whatever they had incurred thereafter as the use of letter of credit started growing by leaps and bounds the international chamber of commerce developed the first version of the ucp in 1933 ucp is uniform customs and practices for dcs uniform customs and practices for dcs the first one is called ucp version 82 public icc publication number 82 published in 1993 later 151 was issued then UCP 222, UCP 290, UCP 400, UCP 500, and then in 2007 we have UCP 600. There are other supplements to this Uniform Customs and Practices, the guidance issued by the ICC. It, uh, it is the Rules for Bank-to-Bank -bank Reimbursements (URR 725), the ICC supplement to UCP, that is EUCP for electronic presentation, and then we have the ISBP (International Standard Banking Practices). If you look at the principles of the documentary credit it's a guarantee of the documents evidencing goods will come so the goods will come or the documents evidencing shipment of goods will be there it is meant to pay for the applicant's purchase it is not intended to manage an underlying contract and credit by its very nature is a separate transaction from the sale or the underlying contract these are the basic principles under which a letter of credit is issued normally letter of credit are issued by banks but when a non bank issuer is a letter of credit the financial means to fulfill the requirements under the letter of credit the financial means of the issuer is what will be of concern to the beneficiary the beneficiary is also worried about the credit standing the reputation of the issuer and other various and relevant risks now we shall turn our attention to the definition to the documentary credit given by ucp the uniform customs and practices the publication by icc says a documentary credit is any arrangement however named or described so it did not have a name called dc documentary credit letter of credit or credit it can be any arrangement however named or described it should be a definite undertaking of the issuing bank 
it should be a definite undertaking of the issuing bank and this undertaking is to honor honor or to pay honor or the three types of honors are there to pay to accept and pay on a deferred date to accept a deferred payment undertaking and pay on a deferred date and the honor will be a to a complying presentation so what is a complying presentation the presentation that complies with the terms and conditions of the dc presentation that complies with the terms and conditions provided for in the ucp for dcs and the terms and conditions in the international standard banking practices when we say international standard banking practice we just not we do not refer to just the publication mentioned as a supplement in the um, just discussed a while ago but it is all the practices of all the standard practitioners of international trade worldwide let us now turn our attention to the other definitions <coughs> the issuing bank the definition for a document directed it it has to be issued by the bank if a non bank is issued we saw what the risks are it's a reputation risk and a credit or financial liability risk it has to be irrevocable that is once issued the bank will have to honor it is an undertaking or it is a promise and the promise is to pay to effect payment and the payment will be to a named beneficiary so there is a certain amount to be paid a certain party to will be paid and it is an irrevocable undertaking by a bank so when the payment will be made provided the terms and conditions are complied and the stipulated documents are presented what are the stipulated documents it will be given in detail in the document credit and what are the terms and conditions to be complied when what should be done it will be given in the credit if those things are complied met with then the named beneficiary will get the payment based on the promise given by the issuing bank this is the definition of the document credit the document credit is enforceable against the issuing bank even if the applicant is not willing to reimburse or unwilling to reimburse that is whether the applicant has the money or not for whatever he has bought the issuing bank will have to pay <coughs> now let us see at who are the parties to the credit the parties to the credit are various parties related to the credit not necessarily parties to the credit when we say parties to the credit the issuing bank the beneficiary are only the two parties to credit at times we may have a nominated bank we can have an advising bank we can have a confirming bank but in minimum there are two parties the issuing bank and beneficiary applicant is definitely not party to credit but he is a very important party to the underlying <coughs> transaction because of which the credit has come into existence first look at who is applicant the applicant is a party on whose request the credit is issued applicant is the one who is requesting for the credit who is authorizing the credit who is allowing the credit to be issued he is not party to the credit itself the interaction between the applicant and the bank as well as the applicant and the beneficiary is outside the scope of ucp an issuing bank is under no obligation to accept or take note of the request for amendment or waiver of discrepancies the applicant at whose request the credit is issued can give request for amendment and can also ask the issuing bank to waive the discrepancies in the presentation but the issuing bank is not obligated to listen to it the applicant fills up a document credit application form it is an request come indemnity and although the individual fields in all the banks will be the same and it will follow the swift mt700 format or structure each bank will have its own style and they have its own fine print which are the terms and conditions or the uh, clauses that makes the applicant liable for anything and everything under this letter of credit transaction the applicant has to provide clear precise and concise instructions here yeah, the applicant has to say what are the terms and conditions to be met against which payment should be made the applicant should also say the type of the document required the issuer of the document the format the content and the data to be evidence in the document in turn to evidence the compliance with these terms and conditions which means the applicant or the buyer should say what goods or service is expecting and how it has to be evidence in these documents when it has to be done how it has to be done who has to do it and where he has also mentioned the details and quantity and quality of the goods and how they are to be evidenced how shipment etc to be evidence so <coughs> if a specific quality of the goods is required who will be the inspecting agency what should be the inspecting result if it has to be shipped whether it should be by ship or by air when how where all those information the applicant has to provide let us see about the beneficiary beneficiary is a party in whose favor the credit is issued the issuing bank and the beneficiary are the two parties between whom there is a promise of getting payment or giving payment upon receipt 
the beneficiary has to review the DC. That's his first important duty. He has to revert or they have to revert on the inability to comply with the terms and conditions or submission of documents stipulated. The beneficiary has to look at the terms and conditions. They also have to review the documents called for and if they cannot submit those documents, produce those documents or if they cannot meet those terms and conditions, they have to get back. They have to respond also in case of a mismatch in the underlying contract versus the documentary credit. The beneficiaries arrange for the manufacture or production or procurement of the goods or the shipment of the goods or the rendering of the services if and only if they find the documentary credit acceptable and workable. If they find the terms cannot be met or documents cannot be submitted, then they are not supposed to make shipment because payment is not guaranteed by the issuing bank for non-compliance. After shipment, the beneficiary has to issue or collate and arrange to get the documents issued the stipulated documents which evidences compliance with the terms and conditions of the credit and these documents will usually be presented to the nominated bank. Now let us look at the bank. There are four types of banks which are associated with the DC. The issuing bank. Issuing bank incorporates its irrevocable and independent undertaking to honor. Issuing bank when they issue the credit they are giving an irrevocable undertaking and independent undertaking to honor. Issuing bank is a bank that issues a credit and it is issued at the request of the applicant or on its own behalf. There can be two types. It can be issued at the request of applicant for and on behalf of the applicant or on its own behalf and it incorporates irrevocable independent undertaking to honor. Why it is independent? Because it is independent of the underlying sales contract. Why it is irrevocable? The moment it is issued, the issuing bank's promise to the beneficiary will hold good until and unless beneficiary agrees to have it cancelled. Let us look at the advising bank. Advising bank is the bank who advises the credit to the beneficiary and it is advised at the request of the issuing bank. Most of the time, whenever there is international SWIFT transmission, this is the bank to whom the issuing bank sends the SWIFT to be advised to the beneficiary. Their responsibility is just to ensure it is complete and it is genuine. <coughs> nominated bank. Nominated bank is the bank with which the credit is available. What do we mean by available? For payment, acceptance, deferred payment or negotiation. The beneficiary can get the documents or the draft negotiated or get a deferred payment undertaking or get an acceptance or get the payment at sight for the documents when presented to the nominated bank. So the bank to whom the beneficiary bank whom the beneficiary should approach for getting the payment or settled under the DC is the nominated bank. The bank is normally located in the country of the beneficiary. The nominated bank is normally the beneficiary's bank, close to beneficiary. Usually but not necessarily it's also the advising bank. When a particular bank is nominated for negotiation or acceptance, the same bank will be the advising bank of the documentary credit. DCs may also be available with any bank. Instead of saying a specific bank in a specific country or the state or a city, the LC can say available with any bank in a particular country. May be made available with issuing bank only. And DCs can say it is available only with issuing bank. In that case, beneficiary will have to make presentation of the documents to the issuing bank only. Now let us have a look at the confirming bank. The confirming bank adds its confirmation to the credit. What do we mean by adds its confirmation to the credit? It is a definite irrevocable independent undertaking. Issuing bank is also giving an irrevocable independent undertaking. Confirming bank is giving another irrevocable definite independent undertaking. And the undertaking is to honor or negotiate. It negotiates or honors. What is honor? As we discussed earlier, it can be a site payment or an acceptance or a deferred payment. We will see more in detail. And this honor or negotiate undertaking is in addition to and separate from the undertaking of the issuing bank. Issuing bank gives an undertaking in the form of LC in favor of beneficiary. The confirming bank gives in addition to and separate from that of the issuing bank a definite irrevocable and independent undertaking to honor or negotiate. A confirming bank upon the issuing bank's authorization or request only adds its confirmation. It does not add its confirmation normally on its own. We do have a concept called silent confirmation where without the knowledge of the issuing bank, some banks do add their confirmation. That is an aberration or difference. <coughs> this confirmation is normally, whenever there is a confirmation, normally the confirming bank is also the advising a nominated bank. So when an issuing bank nominates a bank to confirm the documentary credit, they nominate the same bank for acceptance or mm, uh, deferred payment undertaking or whatever. And it will also advise, uh, nominate the same bank to advise the documentary credit. If confirmed, the DC should be made available with the confirming bank for honor or negotiation. What does it mean? In case the DC is available with any bank, 
once a confirmation is added by the confirming bank the day sheet should say available only with confirming bank so these are the various parties to documentary credit and we have seen the definitions of the um, terms associated with the credit the definition of the documentary credit itself and how a settlement or reimbursement is done when we look into the settlement and reimbursement aspect <coughs> the settlement or reimbursement under the documentary credit to the beneficiary for having made the shipment and presented documents is available in some form so they have to make a presentation they have to submit the documents called for under the credit and evidences of having complied with the terms and conditions of the credit once a beneficiary submits if the documents are compliant then there will be honor or negotiation provided a complying presentation is made by or on behalf of the beneficiary honor or negotiation will happen and after honor or negotiation the nominated bank will dispatch the documents to the issuing bank according to the instructions of the credit so the nominated bank is the one who will effect settlement or reimbursement how they do by honor what is honor to pay at site if the credit is available by site to incur a deferred payment undertaking if the credit is not available at site and if uh, incurred deferred payment undertaking is incurred it will, they have to pay at maturity to accept a bill of exchange if the credit is available at a deferred date to accept a bill of exchange and then pay at maturity this is what is honor it can also negotiate what is negotiation purchase of draft or documents it can be draft and a document or draft or document the documents will be there draft may or may not be there what is a draft a bill of exchange these drafts will be drawn on a bank other than nominated bank the drafts are normally drawn on a bank other than nominated bank and <coughs> this purchase of draft is done by the nominated bank in case if it is confirmed it will be drawn on confirmed bank in case it is not confirmed it will be drawn on the issuing bank and these drafts are purchased by the nominated bank that is they will <coughs> purchase those drafts and how the negotiation happens by advancing or agreeing to advance funds to the beneficiary what is advancing or agreeing to advance funds to beneficiary they pay to the beneficiary either on the date of negotiation or any other date and when this should happen on or before the date reimbursement is due to the nominated bank so in case of a site transaction if a nominated bank claims they will be having 3 4 days to get the reimbursement from the reimbursing bank before that if the drafts or documents are purchased by the nominated bank and paid to the beneficiary or funds has been agreed to be advanced to the beneficiary there is a negotiation in case of a 30 day 90 day usan transaction before the 30th or 90th day if the nominated negotiating bank agrees to advance funds to the beneficiary purchases or prepays these drafts or documents then it is supposed to have negotiated the nominated bank that is also the confirming bank must honor or negotiate they have no option to if the documents are compliant they have to honor or negotiate under settlement reimbursement you also have to look at how the reimbursement to the nominated bank is coming the reimbursement to the nominated bank can come in two three fashions one of them is debit and account of the issuing bank if the issuing bank and the nominated bank have their accounts with each other debit the account of the issuing bank or claim reimbursement from another bank or they will get reimbursed by the issuing bank upon their satisfaction of compliance which means the documents are sent to the issuing bank issuing bank will satisfy themselves and then they will remit so these are the various aspects of the documentary credits this is a small overview of what a documentary credit is and what we will be doing what the definitions are and things like that thanks for watching the video we shall meet again another day on another subject